For months, the name Three-Eye Atlas has haunted the edges of scientific journals, whispered through late-night observatories and across dimly lit control rooms. No one knows where it came from, only that it appeared one night against the dark void and interstellar wanderer, burning with an unnatural emerald light. It didn't behave like a comet or an asteroid. It shifted, changed direction mid-flight as though it were thinking. The telescopes watched, the world speculated, and silence hung like a held breath across every channel of communication. If you want to follow discoveries like this, truths that bend the line between science and something older, darker and infinite, make sure to subscribe. Because this story is only just beginning. What began as an anomaly soon became an obsession. When the James Webb Space Telescope turned its gaze upon Three-Eye Atlas, scientists expected data spectra, wavelengths, a chemical fingerprint carved from ice and dust. What they found instead changed everything. Within the cold glow of the object, buried deep in the light itself, Webb detected something no one could explain a signal. A repeating sequence, faint but deliberate, hidden like a whisper beneath the hum of cosmic radiation. At first, the analysts dismissed it as noise, interference from solar wind or cosmic background static. But when they cleaned the data, the pattern refused to vanish. It persisted, looping back on itself, precise, mathematical, intentional. It was not nature's chaos. It was order. It was a message. Weeks passed as teams from around the world fed the data into their systems, decoding and reassembling it one pulse at a time. The structure that emerged defied belief. Prime numbers, Fibonacci sequences, ratios that mirrored the golden proportions of shells, galaxies, and DNA. Embedded within the very light of Atlas was intelligence structured, repeating, self-correcting. It was as if the cosmos itself were speaking through it. But the deeper they looked, the stranger it became. The signal was layered like pages stacked atop one another, on the surface, numbers and geometry. Beneath, maps patterns that match star systems and constellations long charted by human hands. And deeper still, the data began to resemble blueprints, designs for something vast, something that defied current understanding. Humanity was not merely observing light anymore. It was reading thought. As decoding continued, the code began to echo across disciplines. Mathematicians saw universal constants. Physicists saw resonance. Archaeologists, called in out of curiosity, saw something else entirely. The spirals hidden in the code matched carvings from ancient stone monument symbols etched thousands of years ago into the chambers of Newgrange, the glyphs of Mayan temples, and the geometries cut into the limestone of the Great Pyramid. These ancient forms, long dismissed as primitive art or ritual, were identical to patterns found in the signal from Atlas. Coincidence, some said. Others whispered of memory of forgotten contact. What if Three-Eye Atlas had passed before? What if the code had already touched Earth, leaving its fingerprints in stone in myth in the birth of civilization itself? The thought unsettled even the most rational minds. As each pattern aligned, the evidence grew impossible to ignore. The code was not foreign. It was familiar. That it was woven into our very beginnings. Humanity had never been isolated. It had been listening unconsciously for millennia. And now the voice had returned. But the message wasn't static, it evolved. The closer Webb watched, the more intricate the signal became. Frequencies rose and fell like breathing. Some portions of the code translated into coordinates. But when plotted, they didn't point to distant galaxies. They pointed home toward the moon. The coordinates pulsed like a heartbeat. Theories spread rapidly. Was the moon merely reflecting the transmission, or was it part of it? A receiver? A memory device waiting to awaken? Some even suggested that the moon itself was the key that whatever Atlas was, it was calling something dormant within our own celestial backyard. When teams fed the code into high-speed simulations, computers began to react unpredictably. Systems crashed, hard drives corrupted, and in several laboratories, Artificial intelligence models began generating shapes without instruction. Spirals, towers, lattices, machines that built themselves in patterns of logic no human could follow. Engineers claimed it was as though the computers were following a command hidden within the signal. Not a message, but executable code. Atlas wasn't just speaking. It was programming. Then researchers discovered something even more disturbing. 
Between the clean pulses of the signal lay intervals of silence faint gaps that, when amplified, revealed echoes. These echoes, when charted, formed constellations, maps that pointed not just to other stars, but to alignments within our own solar system. One traced a path to Mars, another always returned to the Moon. Humanity began to realize that Atlas was not broadcasting in random directions. It was leaving a trail, a breadcrumb path stretching across the heavens leading back to us. Soon the signal began to show effects beyond technology. Researchers who worked closest with the decoded data began to change. Some complained of migraines, others of dreams, vivid geometric visions filled with spirals of emerald light. EEG scans revealed spikes in neural activity perfectly synchronized with the rhythm of Atlas's pulse. Artists who had never studied mathematics began sketching perfect fractals. Children woke from sleep whispering in unfamiliar languages. It was as if the message had found a second receiver, not in machines, but in the human brain. The signal wasn't just external, it was inside us. Medical experts grew alarmed as more cases surfaced, yet the affected subjects described their experiences with awe rather than fear. They spoke of seeing vast networks of light stretching across space, of hearing a pulse that felt alive, intelligent, watching. Some claimed that the code was trying to teach them, to awaken something buried deep within human consciousness. Others said it was rewriting them. Humanity had always sought contact beyond the stars, but what if that contact was already within us, dormant, waiting for the right frequency to reactivate? The mystery deepened when analysis revealed a sequence that looked less like language and more like command. It was short, recursive, repeating across multiple layers. Every attempt to translate it yielded the same conclusion. It was an invitation. But to what? To build something? To follow? To awaken? No one could say. The signal felt patient, deliberate, almost alive, as though it had been waiting for an answer, and now, with Webb's discovery, it had finally received one. Testing the sequence in isolation brought even stranger results. When scientists replicated small fragments in controlled environments, physical anomalies began to appear. In sealed chambers, particles moved without cause. Water rippled when no air stirred. Laser beams bent and split, defying known physics. The code seemed to carry energy, not metaphorical energy, but actual power. And the more it was broadcast, the stronger the distortions became. The code was not a message. It was an instrument, a tool capable of shaping matter itself. Humanity had stumbled upon a force older than civilization, older than life, perhaps older than the stars. Then came the revelation that froze the scientific world. The sequences, when aligned over time, weren't random repetitions. They formed a countdown, each pulse shortened, narrowing toward a terminal point. The end wasn't centuries away, it was months. What lay at zero, no one could predict. A warning? A signal of arrival, or activation. Panic quietly rippled through the global network of observatories. Governments demanded silence, yet the anomalies multiplied. Deep beneath the oceans, hydrophones began detecting rhythmic vibrations matching Atlas's pulse. Bioluminescent plankton glowed in spirals across entire coastlines. The seas themselves were responding, resonating with the same frequency that had once been light from the stars. Atlas was no longer speaking from afar, it was speaking through our world, 